But now um, we'll move on to midfield. So, you know, oh, the defensive, the attacking midfielders. And just so we don't linger on too much on certain players, we, we, we all agree Bruno Fernandes is the attacking midfield. There is no moving that man out of the position from what we've seen so far. But he, he's incredible from what I've seen so yeah. far. You know, yeah. he's got... His, his goal against Everton may have been, you know, because T-Rex hands Jordan Pickford can't make a simple save. But he scored nonetheless. <laughs> that's not the point. Um, but what I think is interesting is, is if me and Ashley have got a Pochettino system, we both probably have two defensive midfielders since Pochettino is a 4-2-3-1. Or maybe it wasn't really a defensive midfielder because if you look at Moussa Dembele, he did both. But that's kind of what I've done. I've got one really defensive midfielder and then I've got Fred to play the Moussa Dembele role which I think Fred would really fit in a Pochettino system. He's got that defensive ability. He can dribble. He's not as technical a dribbler because Moussa Dembele's dribbling, you could argue, was up there with best in the league. And if you've heard other people talk about him, the man was incredible with the ball at his feet. But Fred Shona, you know, he's come into his own this season after being called a flop. He's, in my opinion, he's starting to easily prove his price tag. He's, in my opinion, Man United's best player this season at the top, in, ahead of Marcus Rashford. He's been... Incredible, and I believe he really could play that Moussa Dembele role really well. So, um, next to him, this is going to shock everyone, and this is where our opinions may differ. I believe Manchester United should cash out on the back room, the locker room cancer that is Paul Pogba. Not that Paul Pogba's not a talented player, Paul Pogba's incredible. He's proven on his day that he can be one of the best midfielders in the world. But for Man United, when does his day exist? He seemed, it seemed like since he first moved there, he doesn't want to be there. You know, social media is more important. Bantering around with, you know, championship talent, Jesse Lingard, you know. He's, um, you know, it's just like, I just think he doesn't want to be there. And while you can still get like 75 million for him, you could go get that 75 million and buy the player I'm about to talk about, Wilfred Ndidi, and still have spare money. I think especially if you're playing a Pochettino system, which is how I built this team, Having Wilfred Ndidi as the man who sticks back, you know, they may have, you know, they may have Upper McCartan or, or they may, I may keep Lindelof and Maguire. You know, Ndidi can drop between those channels and do incredible things as he's proven in his time for Leicester. You could argue he's been Leicester's most impactful player since N'Golo Kante. And looking here, you know, at, at what he'll bring your team defensively as a defensive midfielder, you know, he's going to bring you around four tackles a game, I think it was. He brings you around, yeah, four tackles, three interceptions, two clearances, a dribble and a half. You know, that's just stats. That's not from, you know, that's not even get me telling you from watching. That's me telling you what you should know if you just look at who scored, not even if you watch the Leicester games, you know. The man's incredible and it's probably proven that, you know, maybe it wasn't the worst thing for Leicester to sell on Golo Kante while he was getting up there in age. So I believe the intelligent move would be to sell Paul Pogba, while well, you can get a lot of money, which you can then use the spare money after buying a DD to rebuild the rest of the team where you might find it use. You could probably use the Pogba money to buy Tagliafico and Ndidi, and then the money from players like Luke Shaw, and maybe if you get rid of Juan Mata, you know, Matic, these older aging players who they might not want anymore, who Pochettino may want. At least Man United a lot of money to maybe buy stronger backups where they think they might need them, um, you know, more wingers, you know, more competition for certain players. But yeah, um, to put it simply and to explain, my best choice for Man United's midfielder is bye-bye Paul Pogba, hello Wilfred Ndidi. Um, Harvey, what do you think? Um, I'm going to have to say, I, I mean, I think you can probably tell from this point, I'm, I'm not overly huge on spending these big sort of transfer funds on these, uh, on these big players and whatnot. I have I have faith in the midfield, and uh, that might not come as a as a surprise to you guys at this point now. But even then, uh, we've seen Scott McTominay come onto the scene uh, this season, at least, uh, and show that he he can be that big, strong holding midfielder um, that Man United clearly need. Um, even with that goal against Man City, that I'm sure Man United fans sort of globally love to watch. Um, Again, agreed on Bruno Fernandes. Uh, I think he's one of the best talents in the team. Uh, in his little time in the squad, you know, he, he racked up a few goals and a few assists. Uh, we saw that at Sporting Lisbon over the last few seasons. I think they were linked with him last season. 
uh, actually. And Spurs, Spurs actually almost hijacked that transfer. Uh, it's a good thing he didn't go through because I, I, I couldn't say the same for, for that team. But at least in this team, I think, I think at least if they were to try Pogba, McTominay, and Fernandez, um, with two CDMs being Pogba and McTominay, and the centre attacking midfield, the, the cam, if you will. Uh, being Fernandez, I think that could be really, really good for the team. And again, it it saves them from spending 70, 80 million on a new big name player uh, coming in and potentially flopping. Yes, Pogba has caused his problems with his countless haircuts and his um, the way that he likes to sort of treat social media um, over his teammates, sort of uh, uh, the attitude that he gives towards that. Sorry. Um, I think it's at least worth a go with a player of that sort of worth and value and talent. I think it's it's worth a go keeping him around these two of the great midfielders and seeing what sort of team they can make from that. So yeah, that's that's my take on the midfield for Man United. Um, so anyway, right. So let's move on to Ashley. What do you think Man United should do? Yeah, so in a, in my opinion, selling Paul Pogba would be the best would, would be in the best interest from the club and the player in question. It's a it's no secret that Paul Pogba in the last year or so has been unhappy with the with, with the club for some time, and I think it's the it's in the best interest for him and the club to leave and to pursue his career elsewhere. Um, this could this is it's like good for the club because when Pogba's there, the aura surrounding the club is is all doom and gloom when he's in the news. Like, he's always in the news. He's always being berated by like, Graham Souness or <laughs> any of the other pundits. Um, his wage at the moment is actually 290k a week for a player that's not doing anything to help the club at all at the moment. He's, li- he, he's been, to be fair, he's been injured for a bit, but obviously he, he, in the four years he's been at United, he's played 102 games. Um, is valued at I think 136 million at the moment, which we could use that money to then buy other players, as Gaff said, we could buy other players in defence and attack. And um, yeah, um, when we get, I think the foundation we have in the field is good because we've got McTominay, Fred, Bruno, but Ma- players like Matic and Mata and Andres Pereira and Jesse Lingard need to go because they are just dead wood sitting there collecting a salary, <laughs> collecting a big salary of that. And um, we need players who, who'd work for their money, who work for, for the club. Um, Paul Pogba, <laughs> he's, he, he, all, all the time, he upset arguably the best manager in, Premier, in, in the Prem, <laughs> which, is a, which shows, um, shows how much of a burden he is. And how he can impact the mood of the squad because after that, when all that was going on, the squad weren't performing at all, and the mood of the squad just seemed to be so low. So I think, I think we played Fred in Fred and um, Fred and McTominay in the CDM spots, Bruno Fernandes up front, and then just go with that. Right. So I know that you feel I believe you are quite the Paul Pogba fan with Bruno Fernandes and. Which interests me a lot. I'd like to hear what do you think about the Manchester Manchester United midfield, and what would you do with it? Well, I think it's actually really interesting because if you go back to the start of the season, or like maybe just after Pogba got injured and we didn't have Fernandez that that period before January, um, I think most United fans would have said that our midfield is probably like the weakest the weakest point. Like we don't have someone that can create chances. Like Rashford and Martial have actually, and Greenwood to be honest, have scored like way more goals than they should have for a te- for like attackers that don't have like someone who can like play it through. You look at the other teams like Man City, Aguero. Look who he's got behind him. He's got Bernardo Silva. He's got Sterling. He's got De Bruyne. He's got David Silva. He's got like. Gundogan might be playing CDM, but like he'll still basically be attacker. Like they've got all these players, and um, you know Rashford had Pereira and Lingard, so that just puts it into perspective. Um, so yeah, I, I'm actually quite happy with our midfield at the moment because I think McTominay's um, not obviously not not world class, but he's he's got a lot of potential, and I just I, I love I love how he plays. Like last season 
We played Barcelona at Old Trafford and McTominay was like by far the best player on the pitch, which is some achievement when you have Messi on the same pitch. So I, I, I really like McTominay. Uh, obviously, Fernandes, we know about that. Um, I love Fred this season. He's like proven me wrong for sure. Um, he's, he's done so well. Um, and then Matic is one that I think a lot of people want to get rid of, but I, I think it's worth keeping him for now. But in terms of someone to replace, uh, I think he is like who we should be looking for, especially in this window. Uh, there was rumours like yesterday or the day before of us um, apparently trying to sign Van der Beek from Ajax for about forty million, which would be quite good. But he's not really a CDM; he's more of a, an attacker, which we do need for squad depth. But what I would say is that I'd love to see us go for someone like Saul or uh, Party from uh, Atletico. I think they'd they'd work really well as sort of like energetic, but also like they are defensive midfielders. They're not someone or you don't know what what kind of midfielder they are. You know for sure that they are going to just sit back and let let Pogba and Fernandez just like run riot basically. Um, I think that's where I probably disagree with you guys uh, that I would keep Pogba. Um, I, I'm not as against him as a lot of other United fans are. Um, I sort of think in a way that the, the, the stick he gets is just like so far, uh, sorry, uh, sometimes just so like off the charts. It's like it wouldn't happen to any other player. Um, this season, like he's, he's been injured for most of it. He came back for a game, I think it was like Boxing Day or something, and he got injured again. And obviously, it's hard to feel bad for players that uh, are earning as much money as they are. But you sort of feel bad for him. You hear all this stuff in the press, but you can't go out and like prove yourself and show, show what you're doing when you're just on the sidelines. So it must be kind of frustrating. And to be honest, he hasn't had the best players around him while he's been here at Man United. Uh, first season, he had Ibra up front, who scored a lot of goals, but Ibra also missed without like the amount of assists Pogba should have had that season putting it on a plate for Ibra and was squandered and then Lukaku we all know like he just missed a load, a load of chances as well uh, <laughs> um, and then Rashford in the second Rashford also he's not the the finished product but he's obviously getting there like he's kicked on after Pogba got got injured which is a bit weird but you'd love to see uh, Pogba and Fernandez behind uh, Rashford and Martial so that, that's what I'm excited for uh, the other day I put on my my page like a a mock team for like next week and uh, I think a lot of people disagree with me I put Matic instead of McTominay just like for this game uh, just because I think it was his experience and just sitting back um, and I went for a diamond formation with Matic at the bottom Pogba on the left uh, Fred on the right and Fernandez in the in the attacking midfielder, but I think a lot of people disagreed. Sort of thought uh, go for go for three in midfield. <laughs> yep, there it is. Uh, go for three in midfield. Maybe just have McTominay and Pogba and Fernandez. But like that was just like something I, I came up with. Uh, but I, I'd love to see that. And in terms of the midfield in general, uh, I'm quite excited for it to be honest because I think we've got a lot of um, a lot of depth and. Um, yeah, like that. It's really exciting to me, like how that's changed since Fernandez came in. Uh, yeah, it's you know it's clear Pogba has talent, and no one could deny that. But it's you know, I guess the big question, and maybe this is something where the last stretch of the season will prove the people who want Pogba gone, you know, wrong about his commitment to the club. But you know, what we've just got to go off what we've seen, and even though he has missed a lot of games, I think his antics has proven, you know he doesn't play for the badge as much as some players because as someone who's not a United fan, I always saw Man United's success as weird, especially at a younger age. But like, players who weren't the biggest talents like Gary Neville, Michael Carrick, you know, you wouldn't look yeah, at them. Carrick, that. You know, you wouldn't look, you wouldn't say they're a bad player, but you wouldn't go, oh, that's world class. But it was these players that played so hard for the badge that they looked so much better. You know, Michael Carrick could boss a game and it wasn't because he was a technical wizard. It was because he had heart and he grafted, you know. Um, 
it and it's something that you know we don't really see as much as and it might be because we've seen that from Man United in the past and that's naturally what we compare them to you will always compare Man United to the Sir Alex Ferguson teams you're never going to escape that comparison even if you win the next three leagues in a row people might still go well it's not as good as the Man United team from 07 or 08 you know it's just natural for many teams to compare to your past I think that's why we like Scott McTominay so much because he reminds us of that sort of player like like Michael Carrick like Gary Neville I think it just reminds us of the times where we did have Sir Alex Ferguson and an actual good team and he's just he's one of those players that works so hard for the badge and um, you, you know you know what if you're a fan of a club you would love to see players tracking back making big tackles using it intelligently he, he, he's so passionate about the club and it's just like it, it's so reminiscent of a player like Michael Carrick He's like, he's like one of us, basically, on the pitch. And I think that's why a lot of United fans love him. Uh, also, used to follow me for now there. Um, um, but I, I would I'd also just add, in terms of Pogba, I think we're in a good position, really, because if you compare it to what it was like last summer, where um, basically if Pogba left, we were screwed, like, for midfield. Like, we literally had, like, basically not... Like, Fred, we didn't know he was going to be good. McTominay, we didn't know... He was going to be good. Uh, and then we had Pereira and Lingard as our attacking midfielders, which like just isn't good enough. And Matic also, we, we didn't know um, we didn't know like what, what he's going to do. But now we're in a situation where Pogba is going to come into the team for these last couple of games and we'll see, like, it, it, is he going to perform? And then if he doesn't, like, we can get rid of him. We can get 100 million for him. We don't need him. He's sort of like, a, like an addition to what we already have, which is a nice situation for Solskjaer where he doesn't have to feel like I need to pander to this guy because he's Pogba. Like, Pogba, Pogba's, to be honest, with how the midfield's been playing the last couple of games since we've been unbeaten, he's lucky to come back, but he's, he's getting in because he's a, the World Cup winner. So he's got this, like, remainder of the season to show he cares. And, like, we all know his talent and how good he is. And if he performs, I'm sure he'll stay. Uh, but we can obviously cash in the summer and invest in other areas if uh, if he doesn't. 